Zara, very nice to see you again after you. Popham, just before you set off on a momentous journey. And it's been amazing to watch you go around. Congratulations, first of all. Thank you very much. All of us at Iridium for getting two world records, right? That's right, yeah. So but I mean, thank you to Iridium as well, I should say. You're very welcome, yeah, you're very welcome. And it'd be good to talk through some of your experiences with the, with the kit that you had on board. Mm -hmm. um, but I've got to say, I mean, you've been back, is it nearly a month? Not That's quite right. a month? Yeah, uh, like three weeks now. Four three weeks, weeks. Yeah. right, right, right. And uh, what did you miss the most when you were away? Home, I guess. Home. <laughs> uh, just things that made home home. Mm. You know, obviously parents, family, cats, my own bedroom, uh, stuff like that. And the cats recognise you when you go back. I hope so. I like to think so. Yeah, oh, that's great. And you know, I know you've had a lot of, um, there's a lot of women that have inspired you, pilots, astronauts, and so on and so forth. But on your trip round, you've met so many young girls, boys, old, you know, teenagers. Any of those memories yet where you, you are actually the inspiration for them now, that, that they've started to really look to you towards? Right. Well, I, got, I got some amazing messages from people on social media, both mm. girls and boys, saying, that I've encouraged them to start flying, which is really, really cool. I also got one on Facebook from a 70-year-old man. Wow. Um, and so it, it was amazing to receive those and think, well, it, it's just nice to have a, positive, a small positive impact. Yeah. And you've got quite a following now, really. I mean, how a many, little bit. Do, do you even count, keep count of that, how many followers? You know, once you reach a certain amount, it's, yeah. it kind of, it's hard to imagine, right? But yeah, no, on Instagram, it's like 90,000, yeah. which is incredible. incredible. Yeah. Facebook is like 40, 50, I think. Um, so it's really special to be able to kind of, yeah, just, you know, tell people about my experiences and yeah. have a bit of an audience. Well, you've got amazing footage of so many of the, the areas it went over. I've got to ask you one question. So did you, were you cruising at, I don't know, three, 4,000 feet at some point and thought, damn, I forgot my, we well, forgot something. What would you have taken with you if you go again that you forgot? Or was there anything? I forgot oh. socks. Socks. It was really annoying. So I got to Scotland and I had to go to Tesco's to buy some socks. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. It was a bit silly. Otherwise, I actually got rid of most stuff, so I actually packed too much. Right. And then, uh, as I yeah. kind of was travelling around, I would, um, yeah, unload, I guess. So you had your suitcase in the back, right, the empty mm -hmm. seat, okay, yeah. which was limited for weight, I guess. That's right, so. weight and space, actually, <laughs> just space. Right. Yeah. yeah. And then a lot of pilots that have seen what you've done have got even more respect for you because you've flown around VFR. Or, yes. You know, visual rules so yeah. you've got to be clear of clouds mm -hmm. and be able to see the ground were there moments where you thought you know what i wish i'd got an instrument rating or was it actually uh, yeah. not as bad as people but might then think it's the same like there were moments where i wish i'd done it in a commercial aircraft right, With a... <laughs> right. so so the whole vfr mm -hmm. microlight thing was part of the adventure it was part of the yeah. challenge and actually doing it in a twin engine or whatever yeah, I mean, it would have been easier, but it wouldn't have been quite the same adventure. So yeah. for me, it was really just kind of... So if you could do it in a shark, you could do it in anything, essentially. Well, I'm not trained to go on any no, but bigger aircraft. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, from the yeah. Experience and the turbulence and the winds right, and everything yeah. else. Right, yeah, I that... think it would be a little bit easier if you yeah. were yeah, yeah. 10,000 instead of 2,000. It's yeah. such a great looking aircraft, the shark. I mean, I mean, you didn't really have many technical problems either, did you? One puncture, I seem to remember you had. Yes, in Singapore I had a puncture. Yeah. It was really frustrating. It was on Christmas Day. I spent the whole day at the airfield, airfield trying to fix that. Yeah. And a blocked PTO tube in the next day. Okay, and that was it? Yeah, those are the, the bigger ones. Mm -hmm. Well, talking of other kit that you had, you had the Iridium uh, Rockstar, uh, or the Yellow Brick yes. uh, by Ground Control. And that was providing the feed to all your social media and your ops team here where you were 24-7. Uh, and you had the Iridium Go as well. Uh, where you were using, I know, for messaging. Why don't you tell us a little bit about how you were doing way more on the messaging than voice. It's your preference, right, as a teenager? Yeah, I just, uh, I would text my parents and uh, Megan back home, so they were helping yeah. me with the flight operations. And they are just texting them the whole time, like, could I get weather update? Uh, could I, you know, there's some cloud ahead? Could you give me some pointers mm. as to where it is? Exactly, or thunderstorms, yeah. really helpful. Can you check the radar, please? Yeah. And, and that actually having that was, it was such a relief for me, or like this nice thing to, like in the back of my mind, I realised there's someone tracking me all the time. Like there's someone who knows right now exactly yeah. where I am. Right. And that was really helpful for me. And even if something goes wrong, I can quickly yeah. text someone and ask for advice. And uh, and that was just, yeah, invaluable. And wasn't there one incident where you took the tracker with you, the yellow brick tracker with you, and people noticed, your followers noticed, well, hang on, 
Because I was yeah. going up the road and into a hotel. Now. Right, yeah, that was in Russia, I think. I just landed in Vladivostok. I don't know why. I just, usually I remember to turn it off. Yeah. Because so I'd yeah. forgotten. And it was like a one hour trip. So yeah, it looked like I was flying in a very weird way. Yeah. It's good to keep people road. guessing. Yeah, obviously. exactly. It, it really was. No, that's, that's brilliant. So I was really interested to see how you had. You couldn't go through China because of COVID, if mm. I'm right. And then North Korea, you, had, you came out over quite a long section over water yes. again. How, how did that feel? So it was really frustrating to go from Russia to South Korea because avoiding North Korean airspace, mm. which was in between, yeah. was a bit of a pain. So I had to go way out to sea to, to go around their airspace borders. And it got to a point where by then I'd really flown for about four hours. On my right was North Korea, about two hours away. On my left, Japan, about three hours away. Mm -hmm. And it looked like there was going to be cloud. I was actually going to cut, a, cut across in front of me and block my way forward. Mm -hmm. But I could cut across the North Korean airspace corner. Mm -hmm. And so I considered that. I also considered, okay, maybe going to Japan. Mm -hmm. That's quite far away and I'm not sure what the weather's like. Or going back to Russia. Was at this point, four hours back, you know, yeah. fuel's a problem, maybe daylight as well. Yeah. So I texted Megan with the idea and I asked her, okay, I've got this duration, could I consider cutting into the North Korean airspace? And she, she responded like straight away saying, no, absolutely, do not do that at all. Yeah, um, amazing, yeah. amazing time. Well, I'm glad that you made the right decision, clearly. Yeah. Carried on, got through. <laughs> was this where you were in touch with the KLM pilot? That's right, about? yes. So, because I'm so low, I'm at the range of radio, and I I requested relay from an airliner above, and then yeah. KLM happened to answer, and it was really a cool pilot who was happy to help with anything, and um, yeah, just really, really kind. Brilliant. And he knew who you were, presumably. He didn't. Oh, no. He had he didn't. no idea okay. who I was. Which, right. if anything, actually makes it better, because he was just helping out a stranger. Yeah, no, no, that's great. Um, which is really cool. Yeah, no, that's a nice part, nice story. And so, Mac, your brother is off very soon in March. So sisterly advice. I'm sure you've been asked this a hundred times. But... Yeah, um, you know, I think he's ready. Um, mm -hmm. He's a great pilot. He's patient. He's everything got to be yeah. cautious, but not too cautious. To, yeah. If you're too cautious, you can't fly on the line. Um, yeah. And, and yeah, I, he's, he's ready. Yeah. I believe that he will be able to do it. So Brilliant. And and you, I guess you'll be able to be in touch with him over Iridium more than perhaps right. I even thought you would until I heard you talking a little bit earlier today. So that's brilliant. And so, in terms of uh, your plans going forward, it, I, obviously everyone would think, well, probably something in aviation or engineering or science, but I heard you under sort of thinking about a little bit higher as well. Right, yeah, so I want to go to the US and study electrical engineering, but after yep. that I'd love to become an astronaut. Right. Um, see the world from a bit higher, that's what I'm thinking. Uh, right, <laughs> fabulous, fabulous. Well, Zara, thanks so much for... Um, Having a chat with me today it's Thank brilliant uh, really appreciate it um good luck with everything and uh particularly with inspiring all those uh young boys girls and everybody else so thanks yeah, very much, thank you very, much. Very, kind. very good thank you cheers now